brothers, children, lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. Everything that you give, I, I will give you a hundredfold. Everything that you think you're losing, I will give you even more. The greatest eternal life. You must leave everything. But that song, I give it all to you. Point number two, guard wisdom. Let's go down to verse number 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart. In other words, it's talking about guard, guard from danger your mind. Guard from danger your mind with all diligence. This idea with all diligence, it is like a guard at a guard post. He is going to guard. So literally, almost think of that. Guard your mind with all diligence, just like a guard at a guard post guarding what's in there, in the center. You understand what I'm saying? That's the same way that I am to look upon wisdom, and that's the same way I'm going to look upon guarding my mind. Because if I allow my mind to start thinking or expose myself to things that are not of God, I will very well start to trip up. Amen. But if, if I guard my mind, just like a soldier is guarding, walking back and forth, walking back and forth, looking at all the danger that may come in, get back, get back, get back. That's how I got to look at my mind. That's the imagery of what Solomon is trying to say here. It implies that it is easy to guard or keep one's heart. It is not easy. There will be many opportunities to give your heart to a person or a path that wisdom would definitely warn you against. You read through Proverbs and he talks about a, a man, a young man who actually, he, he goes by a place, an area of a, a brothel. And, and there's a young lady who's out there and here's the, the, the stupid, he goes by and he knows it's not right. So first of all, he knows he should not be walking by there, but I can just imagine if it was like me, not only am I going to walk by, but... I shouldn't be doing it, but I'm going to actually slow walk. No, 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 I shouldn't be here. No, 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 I shouldn't be Oh, she may call me. She's looking. Yeah. No, 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 no. But I shouldn't know I've ever gone by there to begin with. Guard it. Solomon went. Um, he, he meant here that the heart should be kept for wisdom, guarding it against the way of the wicked, according to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19. But the Bible also tells us in how to of other things that we need to avoid, such as when we're talking about the heart, we're talking about, about the mind. Um, in, in Proverbs, excuse me, Psalms 12, 2, he talks about a double heart, guarding against a double heart. And then in Proverbs um, 28, 14, talks about a hard heart. Then you go to... Proverbs 21.4, it talks about a proud heart, and then an unbelieving heart. In Hebrews 3.12, then you go to a cold heart. In Matthew 24.12, and then an unclean heart. In Psalm 51, verse 10. So he tells you all these different things of how the dangers of what you should guard your mind against. So if you see it that many times in the Word of God, don't you think it's there for a reason? Yeah. <laughs> we need to listen to it. We need to read it. Maybe we need to let those things start to form the values in our belief system that will help to us set up the parameters and perimeter around your house. It goes on. Here's a crazy thing, though. It's Satan, um, just like it talks about um, a guard post, the crazy thing is, Satan is actually looking at you oftentimes more than we look at ourselves. Because he's looking at his special watch. When it says he's, he's there to seek and destroy, yeah. seek, he comes after you. Destroy, that means i got to know your weaknesses. Yeah. And, and some of our weaknesses are much more than others. He's i got to know my weaknesses. But he goes there. It, it, it's like a fortress. If I can just find the real crack in the fortress, then I can get in and I can destroy everything. What is the crack that is up here? Because we all know what our individual cracks are. Are you, are you doing anything about those? Or are you just letting it say, God is able. Okay. What does that mean? You have to do your work as well. 
We have to do, I gotta do my work as well. Seek wisdom, guard your mind with all diligence. Don't expose myself to things that I know are not good for me. Don't wait till I get there to try and figure out what to do. Don't do it to begin with. The application is the heart is a reservoir and a change must begin there. If the reservoir is polluted, it does not do any good to fix the pipes or the valves because the water that's coming through is polluted. So you can have clean pipes and you can pump dirty water through it and what comes out on the other end is going to be dirty water. And it's just like I talked about when I had those grass seeds and I went to the store and I, I bought me a, a bag of grass seeds. Actually, I didn't even buy somebody gave it to me. So that was the first mistake. So then I bought a bag of grass I had this bag of grass seeds that somebody gave it to me like a little Walmart bag. So I was like, oh, bet, I'm going to start planting it. Well, okay. I, I planted the grass seed, but there was weeds in that grass seed. So now when I plant the grass seed and it started to sprout, for every two little blades of grass, I had another blade or two of weeds. So then as it started, so now the bad element has mixed in with the good element, and now the bad element is going to start to choke out the good element. The bad elements in our lives start to mix in that little bit of good element that happens because we read one verse of scripture, and we think that's going to carry us through. And all of a sudden, that bad element has now run rain on you. I'm You said that. Because how many of us can sing many, 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 many songs? How many of us can quote little, 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 little scripture? Well, Come on now. Something's not right. One is influencing the other as opposed to God. The word of God dictating, not influencing, dictating everything that happens in your life. I'm pretty tough. One of Satan's chief strategies is that he hides the consequences of our path whether it is good or just evil, hide the consequences of our path and think that, okay, well, I'm just getting caught up in the moment of doing this, not thinking of the long-term repercussions that it can have upon me, the long-term repercussions it can have upon my kids, the long-term repercussions it can have upon my wife, the long-term repercussions it can have upon the church, the long-term repercussions it can have against my calling, the long-term repercussions it can have against anybody whose life that believed in me or came to me, all of a sudden, it just magnifies and magnifies and magnifies. But Satan holds that back and just lets me get caught up in the pleasure of that moment. Thanks, old preacher. Guarding of our heart with all diligence means saying temporarily painful no to the excitements and the enticements the overall result, though, is happiness, joy, and pleasantness. Number three, guided by wisdom. Let's go through. Um, starting at verse number 24, put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. In other words, to stay on the path that just one must give attention, first of all, to what you speak. To what's being spoken to you and to what you speak. Listen, if you are surrounded by people that are doing no more than just gossiping, that are doing no more than just, just, just telling you all bad stuff, dude, y'all need to get away from it. Yeah. I promise you, y'all need to get away from it because sooner or later it is going to influence you. Yeah. Well, once at one point you would think that cussing was a bad thing and you've been taught that cussing is a bad thing, all of a sudden you become numb to it, and next thing you know, you may very well start doing it yourself. But <laughs> it, it, it does not matter to you as much. You have become numb to sin. It, it, it has become entertainment to sin. That's Satan telling you the lie, telling us the lie. Wrong is wrong. Amen. The word of God is right. Everything outside the, the word of God is wrong. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Seek for first things. We say in songs. And some of the hardest thing is when I actually would go back and I would listen to some of the stuff that I used to sing. Oh my God. Yeah. And it, well, I'm, not, I'm not just talking about the rap stuff. I'm, not, I'm talking about some of them slow songs too and some of the other stuff. You know, when you start going back and you start looking, you start
chart, stop singing it, and just look at the lyrics, all of a sudden, whoa, whoa, oh, that was in my top ten? Oh, I gotta take that one out. But here's the thing, that's okay, that's okay, take it out, should have been there to begin with. But I understand their purpose, and I know it's doing nothing but pulling me away. By me doing that, it's enticing my mind. Because once it gets up here, it's going to entice my mind to make me start thinking of doing my thinking of doing something else, doing something else that is completely against the word of God. How many songs that I used to, used to sing a song and then get a song going and it used to pump you up because you was ready to actually go to blows with somebody. You would get that fired up by what you listen to. That lets you know. Or it would entice other feelings, any sensual feelings in you from a song. That should let you know. Yes, sir. What music can do to us. Yes, sir. And then what we watch and what we see. Mm -hmm. We snuggle up with. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what I've learned. Righteousness will control the tongue. Avoid twisted and crooked speech. The next thing he talks about, look, let your eyes look straight ahead. We often depart from the path uh, uh, of what is just. We often depart from the path of what is right because our eyes are too busy looking all the way around. Look at what everybody else is doing. Dude, look this way. All right. This way. This way. This way. That's why they put blinders on animals so they don't look this way and this way. Look this way. This away. Amen. Straight ahead. Walk this away. Don't be worried about what is happening over such and such house and this and house house. But worry about what they're doing, what they're doing. Yes, if you know they're doing wrong, bring them, talk to them, rebuke them out of yes. love. Yes. But at the same point, I don't need to know everything that's happening in everybody's house. Yeah. All right. My goal, our goal, if we say that we are Christ. Christians, that means we are Christ-centered. Christ-centered. Yes, In every aspect. Straight away, straight ahead. Straight ahead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean down into all understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will do what? Make that path straight. So it lets us know then, okay, without trusting in him, then my path is going to be crooked. <laughs> Let your eyes look straight ahead. Then he goes on. Ponder the path of your feet. Um, if one could only consider the destination of the present path. I used to get in trouble with this all the time. Because we would be driving down the street, and we would go into a place, she said, why did you get over I don't know. Then why did you get over it? I thought I should just get over it. What if I just walk through life like that? I don't know. I'm just going to walk through life. I guess I'm going to go this way today. Oh, maybe I'll go this way today. Maybe I'll go this way today. But I said that I'm actually following Christ, so maybe I'm going to follow this way today. Maybe I'm going to go this way today, because I think somebody's told me that I should go follow Christ looks like this. No, somebody over here told me that I need to do this to follow Christ. No, somebody else told me I need to do this to follow Christ. Next year, I'm following this way, I'm following that way, I'm going all over instead of going to the Word of God. The Word of God. So therefore, I judge everything and everyone against the Word of God. Yes, yeah. I judge what they tell me against the Word of yes, God. Scripture verse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Break it down for me. How'd you get there? But that also means I need to be studying for myself. I brought a, um, I brought a bag of fertilizer one time, and I did not completely follow what it said to do. <laughs> so, what happens is, I guess with fertilizer, you got to first water the grass and get it real saturated, right? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't do that part. <laughs> and then it's saturated as much as I should have. And then I think you're not supposed to put the fertilizer out when the sun is at real high, right? It's another part. Yeah. See, see, there you go. It's another part. I, and I decided I had to do that as well. Why? Because I was listening to somebody else. The directions were clearly there. <laughs> I was listening to somebody else. So, if somebody else wasn't there when I had a brown patch over here, I had a brown patch over here, I brought a brown patch over here. That's my life. Spiritually. 
I, I'm listening to other people mm. instead of examining mm. what they have said against the direction. Right. Instead of examining what they have said against the word of God. No, 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 I think that the directions don't say that. I love you, Gilead. No, I'm going to follow this because they appear to be the experts. They made it. God made us. He's our expert. So instead of you telling me how much you live Right. Instead of you helping to set my boundaries, I'm going to know the word of God. Instead of you trying to set my belief system, I'm going to know the word of God. And I'm going to allow him to set my belief system, and I'm going to treasure it, and I'm going to live within these boundaries that he has set for me. But here's the crazy thing. My boundaries can start to expand as I start to can be trusted with faithfulness. <laughs> Responsibilities, my, my abilities, based upon what he has planned for me. Proverbs 24, excuse me, 427 says, The warning says, Swerve neither to the right, tells us, don't swerve to the right, nor to the left. Uh, Deuteronomy 532 brings that point home again, as well as um, we also have Deuteronomy 1711. And then you can look at Joshua 23, verse 6. They're all similar. But the overall idea is that one should not be distracted away from wisdom. Amen. So I'm going to just wrap things up. When you look at these last, especially the last part that we just went through, 23 through 27, you notice that's pretty much your whole body. Your whole body is, is pretty much in, is included in there. That means we have to present our bodies, in other words, as a living sacrifice, Same. holy and acceptable yes, in His sight. Yes, sir. Every single day. God, you're going to tell me um, when I should water the grass. You're going to tell me when I should toil this. You're going to tell me how to keep it up. You're going to tell me. 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 You're going to tell, tell me. And why? Because it, it's not a matter of you telling me, like, I don't want you to tell me what to do. No, I treasure hearing from you. I treasure your wisdom. I treasure the results of it because I treasure you. And I will do it because I treasure our relationship together. So then how does it start? Um, we can go to Romans chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Let not sin reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in, in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and from your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And then you go to, it all starts with salvation. That's it. That if thou would confess with thy mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I hope I haven't worried out too much, but I, I, this has just really been laid right on my heart to do it. You, know, you guys, you know, y'all are going through a lot. Y'all are going through a lot, and a lot is being thrown at you, thrown at you, thrown at you. And it's all in the name of what the world calls truth. Parents, we, got to, we have to surround them. They we talk. have to surround them at home. Parents. We have to give them the word of God, which is truth, and let them know everything that you hear outside of that, it is not truth. But that means that we have to model truth. And, and, and that starts with spiritual disciplines. That starts with prayer. That starts with fasting. And I'm not telling you kids to fast and lose milk, but there has to be something more, a family fast where everybody gives up something for the sake of prayer, for the sake of seeing that we don't need this. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm learning this because I see that there were mistakes I even made with my kids. Okay? So I'm not trying to preach down to you, but I'm just telling you what I have learned and the experience I've learned. But it's not too late. It is not too late if we just started with the spiritual disciplines. Read the Bible, prayer, fast, family time, mm -hmm. family time. There may be somebody here right now, and maybe you, you don't know Christ, and you have not really set boundaries for your life, and you've allowed other people to set the boundaries for your life, because you find out that everybody who, who's allowed to set the boundaries of your life, you got half your fence down over here, you got another break in right there. Your, your grass is turning green. Excuse me, your grass is turning brown spiritually. 
spiritually. It all starts. Confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. Yes, sir. Then the wisdom of God will be yours, and you will start to see the treasure, the beauty of it. <clears throat> Jesus' name.